Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacy. You're joining us for our Leaders and Legends segment. Our guest for this segment is Kerry Warburg Block, CEO and founder of EarthKind. Welcome to the show, Kerry. Hey, thanks for having me. Happy to be here, Bob and Stacy. So we're super excited to have Carrie on today because she is kind of this massive business tycoon. Uh, she's the founder and CEO of EarthKind. You can find them at earthkind.com. They make all natural pest repellent products. Carrie started EarthKind in 2007 with nothing more than a 99 cent package of garden seeds and a purpose to make natural pest control effective and available to homes everywhere. Today, the company has sold over 50 million of its products through local retailers nationwide, including Lowe's, Ace, John Deere, and Target. Their fresh cab product started at Carrie's Kitchen Table and came to market in 2007. Today, it's a $50 million brand. EarthKind's new line, Stay Away, which is a guaranteed natural pest prevention, just won Best New Product of the Year, voted on by industry trendsetters and popular vote. Between the two brands, these products are sold in 35,000 stores across the U.S., such as Lowe's, John Deere, Ace Hardware, etc. She has gone from being part of her local homemakers club to advising the SBA, Congress, and the White House on policy that impacts women in business. You are an amazing woman. First of all, tell us, tell us first about your product, and then I have questions about how you've built your business. Sure. Thank you. What a, what an intro. I'm, I'm honored. How do I follow that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, my products repel pests, and uh, they do it in a way that's all natural, safe, and highly effective. So I had a terrible problem with mice on the farm, and I was like out of my mind crazy. They were causing so much damage. We had no money um, really to continue to pay for the damage of the, that they did. And so it was either go insane or <laughs> do something to solve the problem. So I invented the first natural rodent repellent that met EPA standards for efficacy. So I think it was a woman's approach. So that kind of sums up what we do. We do pest control that's um, easy, effective, and natural. What they are is scented uh, little pouches, kind of like an old-fashioned sachet, and you put it into the areas where pests go and they leave on their own. So there's no mess, no hazardous chemicals, nice. no pests, guaranteed. So was this the first business you ever started, first of all? No, this is, uh, this is the eighth. Wow. I'm a serial entrepreneur, like a physician, practicing physician. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's awesome. So <laughs> what are some of the other businesses you had before this one? Well, the first would be, well, of course, there's the Kool-Aid stand, but that doesn't count. <laughs> I started um, delivering newspapers, and I was the kid that didn't want to be out there really early in the morning. So I formed a little distribution network and got a bunch of other paper kids to go out and deliver it. And I said, well, I'll do all the business. I'll collect the money and all of that. And I get to sleep in in the mornings. Um, wow. so that wasn't very <laughs> long awesome. because mm-hmm. I didn't know how to lead the boys yes. to get up early and actually mm-hmm. do it because nobody wanted to. Mm-hmm. So, um, I did that. I had a housekeeping service. Uh, I did that. I started a bookkeeping service when I was in high school, when I was about 19, I started my first, I would call it real, real business, um, delivering singing telegrams and balloon bouquets. Wow. I had... Many of my friends, and I housed it, of course, in my parents' basement. Wow. <laughs> I made, like, every mistake in the book and um, sold that business, had some cash, mm-hmm. um, moved, and then lived on the money for probably six months, and then it was, oh, my goodness, the money's out. What do I do now? So it's always been natural for me to start a business, but I've never actually – had one up until this business where I didn't have to have part-time jobs on the side and another full-time job to, to get me through that. That's awesome. And I think that's a really important piece of uh, what you can share with people today because I think so many entrepreneurs, they have a dream. They say, I'm going to go start a singing telegram business and it never gets to where they want it to go. So they give up, they go back to work, and they never try again. I mean, there's a lot to say for 
perseverance if you have a dream to start a business. Was that even your dream to just be an entrepreneur? Yeah, it really wasn't. Um, the, the things that I've done in the past are, are really solutions to something that really ticked me off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, something <laughs> yes. that I saw out there that was being done so miserably, and I knew beyond any shadow of a doubt that I could be better at it. And so I, I do those things, but I never really took it any further than that until this business where um, I really, with this, this time, I engaged purpose with it. I, I thought, you know, Carrie, geez, if there's one thing you could do with your life that would really make a difference, what would that be? Hmm. And that's, that's really where I started taking a very, very different approach with this business. Um, and I had help. I um, was in the business that I had before, I was selling organic produce and making uh, potpourri and selling it to local retailers. I probably had it in 200 stores. Uh, the market fell out of that. Remember when the Yankee Candles came out? And right. I was like, nobody wanted my beautiful potpourri anymore. And they, <laughs> they just wanted to buy these candles. Uh, you know, it was crushing because here I had... I had like a quarter acre of these dried flowers growing out there. It was just, I'm like, oh my gosh, how could I be so stupid not to see this and let this happen? Um, and I took a deep step back and I'm thinking, okay, let's let's move this business into something that's um, non-discretionary, right? I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, pest control. Certainly not the sexiest thing in the world. <laughs> right. because, you know, in in my past of selling beautiful potpourris, I used to be a makeup artist. Wow. Um, you know, I I worked in, out in retail. Funny. I've been a truck driver. I've I've done a lot of different jobs over the years, and I just never saw myself really in this industry. But I stood back and I looked at it, and there really is a problem, right, that needs to be solved, and it really ticked me off that nobody was doing anything about it. I was a a mom. I had pets, and I'm thinking, why doesn't anybody care that there isn't a a product out there that controls a pest without being a poison or killing it? Mm. And and so I did the research, um, which is always a really good step so that you know if you're at least on the right track. You know, it's like a sniff test, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I made a lot of calls, and I didn't have to buy research, right? I didn't, I, I just, I went to stores and I asked questions. I went to the state. I started digging around. And fortunately, today, there's so many more resources out there um, than what I first started with. And I can share those towards the end of the call. So if people are feeling stuck, they have something they can go to and just keep them going even just another step at a time. But I found out that, okay, it's a $2 billion industry, which at that time I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, that's so huge. If I can just have 2% of that, right? Oh, right. boy, this is really going to be a fantastic business. So I started out thinking in that way. And um, I had first went to other companies and said, hey, I have this idea. Would you be interested in licensing it? And um, they said, that's stupid. That's never going to work. Nobody will ever pay money for something when they can use a poison for three or four bucks and take care of the problem. Hmm. And then, you know, that's when I started to get really mad I'm like, you know, nobody cares. Right. Nobody cares about this. I said, this is this one takes a mom, right? Right. <laughs> it takes a that's woman. awesome. And so that's, I can't believe that was their really response because my my wife would go ballistic if somebody ever said that to her if she asked for something that was you know that didn't kill the pests. Mm. I think there's a lot of people out there that yeah. you know they you don't want them in your house, but you don't necessarily want to kill them either. And that's something that's really become key in our growth and. I'm glad that you brought that up, Bob, because the fact is it's still the category out there is still 90% of the, of the options are poison kill. That's crazy. And when we started, it was 98% because there's those little Mm plug-in ultrasonic things. Right. Mm -hmm. So we've still got a long ways to go. We were the first one to break in and kind of open that up and, you know, what was it, Lance Armstrong, you do the first thing, and then other the other people after right. that follow. So that's what's happening now. But it's really the women driving this thing because, um, you know, they're buying products. So when, when our products came in, like the Stay Away brand, 
it's packaged very pretty. It looks um, almost like something you'd find in a boutique. Hmm. And so when I took this into the retail stores, again, it was the same thing. This is so stupid. This is never going to sell. It doesn't look like it works. It doesn't even look like everything else in there. People just want to kill. Right. So that was key to me of getting that um, product on those shelves, which I think that's probably one of the hardest things to do as an entrepreneur, especially in a product-based company, Mm -hmm. is how do you get your product on that shelf and how do you get your product into the retail stores? So do you have any advice for somebody? Let's just say that I have an invention that I want to bring to market. What is the first step that you would recommend somebody? So if somebody simply has an idea and they want to take it to the next step, what is the first one or two steps they should take? Well, the first thing to do is file a document of discovery. Mm -hmm. And then you can at least make a record of it. It doesn't cost anything. You can just go to, um, in fact, my my law firm in North Dakota, Mm newstallaw.com. You can go to the website. You can download that form for free. You at least make a record of your invention. And then you have, I believe it's a year. um, Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure if the laws have changed recently. But you have about a year then to continue to work on that discovery. Right. Um, there's a number of things you can do depending on what the invention is. There's tech scouting. You can go out, and I did all of these things myself. I didn't have the money to call an attorney. Right. So I got um, resourceful, and I learned how to comb the patent um, office records, which you can go in. In the beginning, I went into our state university, and it's all there. This was like before the Internet. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> I was going to say, isn't it on the internet too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now you can get it right from your, you know, you don't even have to get out of your uh, pajamas to right. do it. So That's awesome. it's all there. I mean, we're at an incredible time to find those things, but um, it's good too to find another entrepreneur. Um, and there's events around the country, startup events. I right. participate in those um, routinely and that's where um people and ideas will come together and for a 54-hour weekend you just work on it and there's there's a lot of business people out there volunteering their time so patent attorneys will come so you can get free advice if you seek those types of things out wow that's awesome do you have any advice so along the way you've had multiple roadblocks first of all such as uh store saying or uh people saying nobody's interested in uh, pest repellent that doesn't kill the pests. So how do you stay motivated when you have a blow like that, somebody telling you that your idea is stupid, that it's not going to go anywhere? How do you get up the next day and start hustling again? <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's a hard thing. It's, it's certainly emotion-filled. I can share a story about that. Yeah. So when the the product Fresh Cab that really launched this business um, and, and the brand has grown so wildly, when I first came out with that and I found out that it works, it took took me say eight years of hard work to go through the patent process, to go through all all of the discoveries that I needed to do, and I, I took it to a trade show. They did a story on me in the news. It was a fabulous success. The next day. There was two, uh, like two block long um, line of people that came in to buy this product. So wow. I was like, wow, I, boy, I hit the jackpot here. You know, I was counting dollar bills and everything right. in my mind. Well, one of the people in that line turned out to be the pesticide police. Oh, no. And mm-hmm. he said, mm-hmm. yeah, he said to mm-hmm. me, you can't make those claims because your product isn't federal EPA registered. And I said, well, Mm -hmm. I didn't know it had to be. I thought it's all natural. Right. He's like, no, that makes no difference. You have to do this. And they, all the advice was do not do this. It's going to cost $2 million. It's going to take testing. You're going to have to change the protocols because right now these were all developed in the late 60s. You know, it was, you count the dead bodies, that's how you know something works. Well, we didn't produce dead bodies, we didn't (laughs) produce stools, nothing. You know, our product just kept them out. Um, So 
that I think that was really a transformational moment for me when I went from being an entrepreneur to being a CEO. Wow. Even before I had my first employee, I said, okay, Carrie, what is it going to take to do this? You have no money. Mm-hmm. You have no business degree. You have no science degree. You have no marketing knowledge. Right. You have no knowledge of how to package products and all of this. I mean, I knew how to sell cosmetics and mm-hmm. move the freight. You know, right. behind mm-hmm. the scenes, but I didn't know anything other than that. So I just started learning as as much as I could and used every free resource that I could. I went to the SBA website, um, did different things like that to help me. Um, started to seek out other uh, mentors. And I would cold call people, and I say, you know, I love what you do, and I admire it, and I wanna, I wanna be you. Yes. Can you just give me some advice? That's and I'd, so awesome. I'd ask the same question: if if you were me, yes, what is the most important thing you would do next? Huh? And, and was that and guy that's right? Really by the way, what I did was he right? That yes. Wow. Yeah, the majority of the time, but I could really caution after going through this and yes. losing hundreds of thousands of dollars mm-hmm. myself making mistakes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I yes. can tell you, um, consultants, you know, they don't know it all. So if if you're going to a consultant for advice, mm-hmm. always trust your gut too, yes. because they can sometimes. It's easy to say, well, this is what's done. Bef- it this is what works. Right. You know, many people told me in the beginning make it in including the retailers we sell to Mm -hmm. we're not going to buy it unless you make it in china and you put it in a plastic crazy container Mm -hmm. and i Mm. said that's not what we're that's not why i'm doing this that's not what i believe in and i walked away well today now earth kind is a a cool popular thing back in 2007 you know we were considered pot smokers and hippies (laughs) (laughs) that's so awesome (laughs) so uh yeah, so timing is important, and so is your gut, because the people who are first to something, I can tell you from experience, and I know a lot of other entrepreneurs now um, in my network that are also disruptors and innovators, and everybody thinks they're off their rockers in the beginning. Right. Because it's just so new and so different, and what worked um, back then isn't what works now. Right. And so people doing something right now, and they might have an idea, especially a technology, mm-hmm. there really isn't a roadmap. You have to create your own, and, you know, it's half gut and half research, Absolutely. really. It's, to yeah. me, it's like a 50-50 um, decision lens you need to use. Well, you are amazing. I think the best piece of advice is be the first to do something. Absolutely. Be, be the disruptor and keep on hustling. Um, we have with us, it is Carrie Warburg Block. Thank you so much. By the way, anybody listening today can check out her product at earthkind.com, a friendly, earth-friendly, no-kill, uh, pest removal product. product. Excellent. Thank you for joining us on the show today, Carrie. Thank you so much. That's all for this edition of Get Real. Join us again next weekend for more. <laughs>